Right. Uh, welcome to uh, our session today. Right. Uh, the main reason for this session is to just do a few revisions. Just a little, th uh, a, a few things. Right. Uh, my expectation is that uh, your test tomorrow, most probably, it will be centered on VAT and, uh, and uh, maybe item income and uh, expenditure maybe to describe if a certain amount will be included in gross income, then uh, to be able to state if a certain expense can be deductible for tax purposes. Uh, so what you should know for that uh, test is to know how to do your VAT. You can use the various questions that we've done and the one that I'm going to do today, it will not have everything, but it will help you to uh, maybe remember some of the few things that are involved uh, as far as determining our um, VAT is concerned. Right. Uh, Right. So, um, uh, and also you should be able to know your the items that are included in gross income and the items that are exempt from gross income, any prohibited expenditure. So I expect you we have done all that. Uh, what you are supposed to be writing on, I think you have done all of it. Okay, when I talk about writing, please, if you are doing FA, FA tax 3701, we are not writing tomorrow. It's mainly the 3761 that are writing. So we'll look at some of the things. <coughs> uh, right. So I've got a question that I sent you. Right. Uh, Transparco Private Limited manufactures roller coaster cuts for Ratanga Junction theme park with rides offered as entertainment to the general public in Cape Town, South Africa. The government's manufacturing process has been approved by SARS as a qualifying process of manufacture. The company is not a small business corporation as defined in the Income Tax Act and the company's financial year ends on the last day of April. The company is registered as a category B, a value added tax vendor, making only category uh, only taxable supplies right i think we know that uh, if uh, a vat vendor is registered as a category b that means they report to SARS on a um, two monthly basis on the last day of either february april may uh, that is the even numbered periods i think this was a mistake it was supposed to be either category b or a right so if it's B, that means it's a two month period, a even month. That is the second month, fourth month, sixth month of the natural calendar year. That is the report in February, April, June, August, October, and December. If it was a category A, they also re report only two monthly, but they use the odd month. That is the first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and eleventh. That is January, March. Uh, May, July, September, and November. So this one considering that this is a category B, they will be reporting in February, April, June, August, October, and December. Right. All transactions are conducted with registered VAT vendors. Right. If on a question they say all transactions are conducted with registered VAT vendors. That means uh, we are assuming that all the people who are going to supply goods, uh, they are going to charge VAT if the product is VAT readable, unless specifically stated otherwise. But if they say the amount excludes VAT, then you have to assume that it excludes VAT. Transparco obtained valid tax invoices and the required documentation for all its transactions. Right, the issue of obtaining tax invoices, they are telling you so that you know that whenever a VAT is relevant, it can either be claimable or payable because they put all the documentation. Remember that for you to, to be able to get, a, let's say, for example, to claim input tax, 
should have all the documentation that is required. So that statement they are giving you to show you that whenever uh, the VAT input can be claimable, they have all the documents to prove so that they can be able to qualify for that VAT input. Right, the senior accountant provided you with the following information. All amounts exclude VAT is applicable unless specifically stated otherwise. Right, whenever they say amounts exclude VAT, that means wherever we'll be calculating VAT would multiply by 15%. Would multiply by 15%. Unless we've got those things that uh, are always used in the 15 over 115. For example, when we talk about uh, buying goods from second hand, uh, sec from second hand goods from a non vendor, that one you know that you always multiply by 15 over 115, whether they say the amounts are excluding or including. All right, for the 12 month period ending 30 April 2021, Transparco had a total turnover of 920,000. Set out below are transactions that took place during the two months VAT period, March and April. Yeah, so this one is a category B. So to cl clarify, please, this is a category B vendor where they said B A here. It's a category B. Was a category B vendor is the one that reports uh, in the two months ending in the even, even months. That is February, April, June, and stuff like that. Right. Let's go to the required. If Transparco Limited was not a registered VAT vendor. Remember that they said this one is a registered VAT vendor. If there was not a registered VAT vendor, what would be the requirements have been for Transparco to register as a VAT vendor in relation to the 12th uh, month period ended 30 April 2021? Right. Uh, there are two ways in which a VAT vendor can uh, register. Remember that you can either register voluntarily uh, or uh, uh, you can be forced to register for that. Those are the two, two ways. You can either register voluntarily or you might be forced to register for that. Right. So right, let us first of all want to see if uh, this company should register for that. So there are two grounds. A, a person can either voluntarily register for that or may be required by the X to register. So it's either you are required or it can be a voluntary. Is that right? Right. A person must register for VAT. Must register for VAT. If they are taxable supplies, we more than twelve months. We more than sold one million in the past twelve months. Or I expected or I expected to exceed one million in the next four months. So if uh, over the past 12 months, you have already exceeded the 1 million, then you are required to register for that. But uh, if you have not exceeded, but you are expecting to exceed in the next 12 months, then you should also register for that. Maybe you already have contracts that you have clinched, which will make you exceed the 1 million, then you should register for that. That is the must part of it whereby you are required 
by the act to register for that. But on the other hand, even if you don't meet the 1 million threshold, you can still voluntarily register for VAT. So we can say a person can voluntarily register for VAT. If they are taxable supplies, more than 50,000. In the previous four months. So uh, if your supplies were more than 50,000, even though they don't reach the, the million threshold, you can still voluntarily register for that. All right, so these are the two grounds that a person can register for that. When we're saying a person, please guys note that we, are also, we mean also even a company. So we're talking about a person in, a, in terms of the VAT Act. Remember that in the VAT Act, even a partnership, which is not a legal person, can register for VAT. Right, so now let's go check. Uh, the question is, can Transparco, if they were not registered, uh, what would be the requirements have been? Is that right? So the requirements could have been uh, more than 1 million or voluntarily. But then we're told that for the 12 months uh, ending Transparco, the total turnover of 920,000. Right. Uh, so the, the fact that they are 10 over is already 920, it's less than a, 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 a million. Right now, considering that transfer turnover is less than a million. There is no requirement. Transparco register for that. But Transparco can still voluntarily register for that. So that means in this particular case of Transparco, there is no forced registration. It's voluntary. So if they were not registered, they could still voluntarily register for that. Any questions there? OK, we'll continue just a minute. Right, we'll proceed. A calculate the VAT payable by or refundable to Transparco Limited for the two month tax period ended 30 April 2021. Show all calculations and indicate reasons for not claiming input tax tax or for not accounting for output tax. Right. So when you are calculating your VAT, there are items that um a, maybe for example, a, that are zero rated. For example, exports. You are supposed to state a, that they are zero rated. Fuel. You are supposed to state that it's zero rated. Then there are items that are exempt from tax. Uh, we talk about things like um, interest, educational services. So if it's exempt, uh, 
you should state that it's exempt. So you don't just have to ignore it and leave it out. So basically you are saying, when you're answering a question on VAT, everything on the question paper should be included in your answer. Normally the receipts will be included under the VAT output. Payments will be included under the VAT input, except a few cases that we shall see. So you would include everything that is on the question, but the way it's exempt or zero rated or for various reasons, it's not supposed to be included. We have to state the reason why. So don't leave out anything. <clears throat> but where the amount should not be included, you just have to state that maybe it's zero rated, then you include a zero amount or you don't even, you just put a dash. So don't leave, <clears throat> there will be marks for each and every item. So don't just take those that are subject to that input or that output. Include every. Right. So we'll, give, we'll do our calculation here. Calculation of what payable or refundable by <coughs> Salfaco Limited for the two month period. Ended 30 April 2021. So as you answer a question on that, you should know that if it's a two month period, we are interested in those transactions that are subject to a VAT for March and April. March and April. Let's remember that we've got a two bases for accounting for VAT. That is the payment basis and the invoice basis. With the payment basis, you only account for that when the payment is taking place. Whereas with the invoice basis, you account for that at the earlier of invoicing or payment. Right, for the sake of our module, we always assume that the entity is using the invoice basis unless told otherwise. So we always assume that we are using the invoice basis unless the question specifically mentions that the entity is using the cash basis or the payment basis. So if it's the payment basis, you account for the VAT when the actual payment happens. For example, if you sell goods on credit, you don't account on the date of invoicing, but the day that the, cu the customer pays you. Whereas with the invoice basis, we use the earlier of receipt or a transaction happening. That means if the payment happens first, you account for the uh, VAT on the date of the payment. If the invoice happens first, you account for the date of the invoice. So please, you should check your periods. And it's not always two months. There are some vendors who pay on a monthly basis. There are some vendors who pay on the on a quarterly basis. There are some vendors who pay on a six monthly basis. There are some vendors who pay on a yearly basis. So check, they always tell you, you don't have to to, to, to think about it. It's not something that you have to know on your own that I should use a month or whatever. But whatever period that they've given you, know that we are dealing with a March and April. So you should know as we start this question that we are dealing with March and April. Right. We should remember that there is VAT payable if your VAT input output is more than the VAT input. If your VAT output is more than the VAT input, that means you have received more VAT on behalf of SARS than the VAT that we have paid, which you are supposed to claim from SARS. So when your VAT output is more than VAT input, maybe let me just mention it here. We did that already. VAT output is more than VAT input will have 
provides payable. And when VAT output is less than VAT input, we have VAT refundable. Right. In your answer, normally we expect you to show the VAT output on its own, then the VAT input on its own. Find your totals and then determine the difference. Right. So now let's go to the question paper. Right. E, number one sales of roller coaster cuts amounted to 220,000 for the two month VAT period ending 30 April 2021. Right, your sales, they will be subject to VAT. Unless you are, maybe let's say you are selling brown bread, there is no VAT on brown bread, for example. It's an example. When you are providing educational services, there's no VAT on educational services. When you are providing loans and there's interest, loans and interest is not a VAT. But if you are selling most of these products, the, most of these products have got VAT. Then we have to remember that we've been told that the amounts exclude VAT, right? So let's remind each other that a a, a, as long as your things are clear so that they can be able to, to see what you are doing, Bradley. But uh, usually they usually present a, uh, the one on top, the other one at the bottom. So I would suggest that you just follow the way that they normally present even in your in your study guides. But I, do, I don't think there will be an issue if you present them side by side. Right. Uh, so if amounts exclude VAT, or we call them VAT exclusive amounts, That means they, it simply means that VAT has not yet been added. Then VAT would be equal to amount multiplied by 15%. So you multiply by 15% spread. Then if amount includes VAT, that means the VAT has already been added, or we call them VAT inclusive amounts. Then VAT will be amount times 15 divided by 115. So it's very important to know if your amounts are exclusive or are inclusive. So for this particular question, we have been told that unless told otherwise, we assume that it's exclusive. So we're using the 15% unless told otherwise. So we'll take the sales and then we'll multiply by 2220. 20. And sales, they've got VAT output. When you, when, when you are the one supplying the taxable supplies, you charge the customer the VAT output, which you will receive on behalf of SARS. Right, so we'll have sales to 20,000, multiply by 15%. What do you get? It depends with the allocation of the mark. Someone who is asking that, let's say, for example, if the transaction is allocated half a mark, so that means if you thing is wrong, then uh, if you say zero rated instead of exempt supply, then the thing will be wrong. Actually, when you say zero rated instead of exempt supply, then, uh, then your answer is wrong. That's definitely wrong. Because remember, for zero rated and exempt supplies, what they are marking is that issue that is zero rated or exempt. So the moment you write that it's zero rated when it's exempt, that means your answer is wrong on that point. All right, on 15 March 2021, 
where they give specific dates, please uh, make sure that you uh, check the date if it falls within our, um, our period. Right. So they are saying that uh, on 15 March 2021, Transparco exported 10 roller coaster carts to the United Kingdom at an amount of 35,000. All the documentary proof as required by the Commissioner for Exported Goods were obtained. Right. When you export goods, uh, the sale will be zero rated. All direct exports as long as you're exporting to a place that is outside South Africa, then uh, it will be zero rated. But if the customer from UK comes and buys in South Africa, then they will be fat. But direct exports will be zero rated. Right. So we'll have our export sales to UK. Then we'll say direct exports. zero rated you know what it means when we say they are zero rated uh, it means uh, the vat is zero percent zero rated is zero percent exempt supply there is no vat then someone can say what's the difference there the difference is that if you are supplying zero rated supplies for example fuel when you are charged vat by your own suppliers you can go and claim the input VAT from SARS if you are supplying zero rated supplies. But when you are supplying exempt supplies, you cannot claim input VAT on the charges that are made against you by your own suppliers. That's the difference between export and uh, the zero rated and the uh, and, uh, uh, zero rated and um, uh, exempt supplies. Uh, Roshan is asking that about imports. When you are importing, it will depend on whether you are importing from a BLNS country or you are importing a, from a, a other country which is not BLNS. When we say BLNS, we mean Botswana, Lesotho, a, 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 Namibia, and Swaziland. So if you are importing from any of those countries, your VAT will only be on the um, amount that you want, uh, that you buy those goods on. Then you calculate the VAT on that amount, right? But if you import from any other country other than the BLNS countries, uh, your VAT will be on the customs duty value of the products plus the customs duty that you pay plus 10% of the what customs duty value so there'll be an additional what 10 percent on the so the, like you find that if it's not a billionaire's country the vat will be more so there'll be more vat if it's not a a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b but if it's in any other country, you are supposed to have uh, the customs duty value uh, plus 10%, plus other uh, import surcharges, then you then find the 15%. That is for imports. But if it's exports, it's zero, whether it's a BLNS country or it's not a BLNS country. For exports, you don't have to talk about the, the, the BLNS country. The BLNS works when you are importing. So you should be very careful there. For exports, we don't talk about BLNS. Right. Then number three. On one March, Transparco purchased a motor vehicle that the managing director used to travel uh, for clients and for personal uh, purposes. The motor vehicle cost 340000 including VAT. Uh, the, ma the, ma the managing director is responsible for the full maintenance cost of the motor vehicle. Right. Uh, now, if you buy a motor vehicle, there are two things. 
a if it's just a motor car a, that motor vehicle you cannot claim input VAT. the VAT input will be denied actually there are two things in this transaction number one there is the purchase of the motor vehicle because the purchase of the motor motor vehicle was made during the 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 VAT period the, the VAT reporting period then number two there's a fringe benefit because that vehicle a was given to the managing director so there will be there will be VAT issues there there will be a, a a VAT output when you give a motor car a motor vehicle to your employee then there will be VAT input there right a related to the to the fringe benefit so there will be VAT out, a output related to that fringe benefit right so now a let's look at uh, number one I, I would start to talk about the um, the motor vehicle right a motor vehicle if it's a motor car is defined if it's a motor car is defined we use the the, the vat input will be denied that means you can't claim vat input if it's a motor car is defined you can't claim vat input vat input actually is denied but if it's any other vehicle then uh, you can claim that input right so here we would have our now the fact that they just said it's a motor vehicle if they just say a motor vehicle and uh, it's not a delivery truck it's not any like uh, these other big vehicles we assume that it's just a simple motor vehicle which will not be subject to what to that so whenever they say a motor vehicle just assume if they say they just bought a motor vehicle for the manager they just put a motor vehicle for uh, whoever the employee whatever supervisor as long as they didn't uh, give a proper description whether it qualifies as a motor car or not we assume that it's a simple motor vehicle whereby that input will be denied so this will be an assumption but if they specify then we have to use the specifications purchase of motor vehicle Motor car is denied. Is motor car is defined. Therefore, that input denied. Right. But if they said uh, like things like uh, delivery vehicles and stuff like that, these trucks, they will be that will be claimed there. Right. Then we come to the fringe benefit. Right, for the fringe benefit, uh, there is a 0.3% if that input was denied. There's, you, there's a fringe benefit, you calculate the VAT on 0.3% of the value of the motor vehicle. You calculate the VAT on 0.3% of the value of the motor vehicle. If the um, the VAT, if the if it was a motor car, but then if it's a okay, let me just write some 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 things here so that maybe you can be reminded. All right, motor car. Whether it's used for trading, as long as it's a motor car is defined. The issue is, is it a motor car? If it's those small cars, then you cannot claim the VAT. It's no matter what you are using it for. It's not about what you are using for. Right. So we'd say the fringe benefit is 0.3% per month. Not, not it's 0.3 percent that will be calculated on 0.3 percent of the VAT exclusive cost of vehicle Month. 
right if it's a motor car if it's a motor car then that will be calculated at 0 0.6 percent if it's not a motor car So considering that we said this is a motor car, uh, then we are going to deduct a, uh, uh, we are going to use uh, 0 0.6 percent. So we are going to use 0 0.6 percent. Right. Then. No, I'm going to come to the maintenance. Don't worry. First of all, the 0 0.3, 0 0.6 does not change. Right. In amount of 85 rand is deducted. If the employee is paying for maintenance. So there will be a deduction of 85 francs. Uh, so that's where the maintenance comes in bullet. So that is where the, 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 the maintenance comes in now. So there will be a deduction of 85 francs if only if the employee is uh, responsible for the um, for the maintenance, right? And we should know that uh, this eighty five rand is deducted before calculating the price. Right. Then also the cost of the vehicle is reduced by 15% per annum using the reducing balance method. For each completed period. Of use of the vehicle. Before it was granted. To the employee. Right. Let's say, for example, if this vehicle was given to the manager, maybe let's say we bought it three years ago, and uh, we now give to the manager now after three years. That original cost, we have to reduce it by 15% per annum using the reducing balance method. For each completed 12 months, so if it was two and a half, we only consider two, two years. If it was three years and eight months, we only consider three years, we only consider completed periods of 12 months. That is from the time that we bought the vehicle until the day that we give the employee usage. Right, but that a 15% a is not applying in this case. Why? Because we just bought this vehicle and gave to the manager. So there's no 12 months here. So the, it will not apply. Right, the managing director is responsible for the full maintenance of the cost of the vehicle. So we are going to uh, subtract the 85. But if the company was responsible for the maintenance, we were not going to subtract the 85. Right. So now to calculate our VAT, I want you to follow me. This is including VAT. We should use the, the value of the vehicle excluding VAT. So we would say the fringe benefit, right of use of motor vehicle.
to get the consideration, we say the 340,000. We multiply by 100 divided by 114 so that we get the cost of the vehicle excluding VAT. Then we multiply by 0.3% because this was a motor car. Right? Then we subtract. 115, sir. Hello? 115, Is it not 115? 115, so I'm now using the old one. All right. Then uh, we subtract 85. So before you even calculate the VAT, you subtract your 85. Is that right? Then uh, after subtracting our 85, then we multiply by 15 divided by 115. So for this, a fringe benefit you always multiply by 15 over 115 you don't have to look at the issue of uh, i will try but uh, it will all depend on uh, when we finish the conversion but i will try by all means to give you today all right then we multiply by 15 over 115 so this one you always multiply by 15 over 115 whether they say the amounts are exclusive or ex uh, inclusive this one is one of those things that i said you always use 15 over 115 Right. Uh, no, I'm still, I'm still going. I'm not yet done. Right. This 0.3% is per month. So if it's a two-month period, as long as we gave him in the first month, he used it for the whole two months, we have to multiply by two. So the 0.3% or 0.6% uh, is per month. If you see here, we wrote that this is per month. So you have to also include the number of months, but you should be very careful because sometimes they can tell you that you only got the vehicle, started to use the vehicle on one April. If it was one April, we're not going to apply by two. But the fact that it was bought and gave, uh, given to the manager, uh, that was one March here. It was used by the manager. So we assume that on that very day, it was given to the manager. That's what is reasonable from the circumstances. Hi, Mr. Eugene. Yes. Um, I just want to please go back to the Excel sheet. I just want to ask something there. Uh, that uh, 15 divided by 115, are you saying we always use that? Because normally when you calculate that, I get it's supposed to be uh, 15 over 100. So are you saying in this case, we always no, no, use no. We, 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 you can't say normally we use 15 over 100. Normally it's these two. It depends. Yes, is that right? Yes, yes. It depends whether the amounts are VAT exclusive or VAT inclusive. If VAT exclusive, use 15 of 100. VAT inclusive, use 15 of 100. Then you can go on. I just wanted to correct that part that you said normally it's 15 of 100. It's not normally 15 of 100. It depends. No, no, no. Right. I was saying because this one, like, we've, we've excluded the VAT. Yes. That is what I explained that for the fringe benefit, you always, always use 15 over 115, whatever is situation. Yes, that's what I wanted to understand that are we always using the 15 over 115 on the yes, fringe? That, yes, 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 I think I, I said it when I was explaining, but no problem, we can repeat it again. Always for the fringe benefit, you use the 15 over 115, always, regardless of what they say. Because the amount that you calculate here is considered to be the, 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 the consideration. Yes, Roshan, what are you saying? Can I just ask something before you continue, Eugene? That yes. 100 over 115, how, where, 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 where does that come from? Because are we not supposed to say- It comes from here. Yeah, that we, we said that you should use the, uh, the, 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 remember that I said the cost of the vehicle, you should use the cost excluding that. But when you're calculating it, uh, uh, when you're excluding the VAT, is that not going to be the 340 by 15 over 115? And then you get well, the VAT. Get this, my sister, for the fringe benefit, whatever yeah. we are calculating here is the consideration. It's assumed to be the value including VAT. Is the fringe benefit including VAT? Mm. Are you getting the sense? Yes. Whatever you are calculating according to the VAT, it, that's the consideration of the fringe benefit. That's the value of the fringe benefit including uh, VAT. 
So this formula is for calculating the fringe benefit value according to SARS, according to SARS, including VAT. Is that right? So, but for you to calculate that, when you are using the value of the motor vehicle, you should exclude it when you are calculating the value of the fringe benefit. So this part here, maybe let me just, this part, the purpose of this part is to calculate the value of the fringe benefits according to the VAT rules. And when you are calculating that value, you should always exclude the VAT from the price of the vehicle. That's the reason why we multiply by 100 over 115. So as long as the price of the vehicle includes VAT, make sure that you first make it excluding VAT, the price of the vehicle. But the value of the the value of the fringe benefit according to SARS, they, they say this value that we've calculated is the consideration that is the value of the benefit including VAT. So that's why they use the 15 over 115. But always the value of the motor vehicle is exclude VAT. Roshan, I still don't understand your question there. Yeah, we are told that this vehicle here, this 340 is including VAT. That's why we are multiplying by 100 over 114. Because according to the formula for calculating the fringe benefit, when we are calculating the value of the fringe benefit, we should uh, use the uh, value of the motor vehicle excluding VAT. That is what I'm, what I'm saying is in the act. Is that right? So when you are calculating your fringe benefit, you should use the, 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 the value of the motor vehicle excluding VAT. Right. Then the marketing director traveled to Johannesburg to work on a marketing campaign. The cost of the 28,000 uh, 28, comprises the following. There was fuel, 9,000. Right. Fuel. Okay, what is the answer? Yes, or first before we, 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 we proceed. I got 2092.21. Okay, so we put two zero nine. Okay. Right. Fuel is zero rated. Fuel is zero rated. Accommodation. Commercial accommodation is good, but commercial accommodation is good, but right. Let's remember that if the accommodation is for more than twenty-eight days, eh, then eh, there will be this issue of um, the VAT will be on sixty percent of the amount. But considering that you are not told, we assume that it was a short journey, right? So commercial accommodation when you go to hotels, lodges, and stuff like that, there is VAT. But always remember, if the stay is for more than uh, 20 days, VAT will only be on 60% on of the amount. So yes, yeah, since they didn't specify, we just assumed that it was a short journey. So accommodation, uh, because we assume that is, uh, is accommodation in hotels. But you know, we know that residential accommodation, there's no VAT on residential accommodation. Right, so it's say 15 and 15% 15 considering that the amounts are excluding VAT. What do we get? Two, three, two, five. Thank you. Our train tickets, 3.5. Uh, tickets for public transport, they are ex in exempt supply. Except eight tickets. 
if you travel by A, there will be VAT. If you travel by A, if it was, if they say that uh, the manager flew, uh, then there was going to be VAT. But whenever, if it's flying again, if there's a leg, you know why I explain all these things is because you might find that in your question, there might not be a how train ticket. So if they say even it's picked a bus ticket, again, it will be the same. There will be no, it will be an exempt supply when you're using this passenger transport. But now, let's say, for example, a, you flew to Deben, there will be VAT there. But again, when you fly, as long as a, a leg of the flying includes a foreign a trip, then a, the VAT will be exempt again. But if you are just flying locally, then there will be uh, there will be VAT, right? Then number five, Transparco purchased a second-hand printer to print the labels on the roller coaster cards costing thirteen five hundred from a non-vendor on fifteen February twenty twenty-one, right? Uh, remember that we are in March. This purchase happened in February. So it was purchased outside our VAT reporting period of uh, March and April. The open market value of the printer at the, uh, at the uh, time of purchase was um, uh, 12,000. Right. Only 3,500 was paid by the end of April 2021. The balance it was to be paid later, right? It, when you purchase goods from a non-vendor, when you purchase goods from a non-vendor, there is VAT. There is VAT there uh, that you can claim. You can claim VAT if you purchase second-hand goods. If you purchase second-hand goods from a non-vendor, there is what we call deemed or notional input tax. It's called deemed or notional input tax. Right. Uh, now for this deemed uh, or national in input tax, right, uh, we use the lesser of the cost or market value. We use the lesser of the cost or market value. So that means when you are calculating the VAT, the cost was 13,500, the market value was 12,000. So you can only claim input VAT on 12,000. Right. That's number one. So if you purchase from a non-vendor, you can claim notional VAT. That's number one. There's always notional VAT if you play, can purchase a second-hand product from a non-vendor. Number two, if that a, a, if the open market value and the cost are different, you use the lesser of the two. So in this case, a, the cost will be taken as the open market for VAT purposes will be taken as the open market value which is 12,000, which is lesser than 13.5. Then number three, you cannot claim on the input VAT on the full amount unless you pay. So you only claim when you actually pay to the non-vendor. So they only paid 3.5 and this 3.5 was paid in April, which is our period. So they can claim input VAT on the 3.5 during April. As long as it's still below the 12,000, the lesser of 12,000, then they can claim that. So we can have what second hand printer. This is another one, my friends. Yeah, this is another one that we always use 15 over 115. So when you purchase, there is dimmed input VAT on second hand goods. What from? non-vendor right so we only claim a uh, so it's a uh, uh, 3.5 so it's limited to amount paid so that will be 3.5 so my friends whether they say the amounts are inclusive or exclusive, this is another one whereby you always use 15 over 115. 
you always use 50 over 115 for second end goods. What do we get? Four fifty-seven. Sorry, sir. Yes, my boss. Yes. Um, if they didn't say that um, the, the, there was an amount of three thousand five hundred that was paid, were we now going to calculate the vet uh, on on the lesser amount be between the purchase price and the market value? Uh, if they didn't say that, then I was not going to include it. Was I would say this purchase happened in February, so I would assume that the pay, the payment was done in February, and February falls outside our period. Okay, but I don't understand. But you let's say, say it's purchased in April, then they didn't okay. tell you whether it was paid or not. Obviously, you assume that the amount was paid, so then we'd use the twelve thousand. Mm. So if they don't talk about the pay, whether it was paid or not. You would use the twelve thousand, but if they say, let's say they specifically say that it was bought on credit and no payment was made, you would write it, but you'd say that there is no VAT that can be claimed because no payment has been made. Okay, so please explain the 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 costing price and the purchase price again. The lesser what what? You use the lesser of the two. To do what? The lesser of the cost price and the market value. When calculating your VAT, the amount on which you calculate the VAT, you use the less of the two. Okay. Like here, we've got the cost, they bought for 13,500. Yes. Although they bought for 13,500, the, the, the market value was 12,000. Yes. So this good will be taken for VAT purposes, their cost will be 12,000. Oh, but for this period, we only calculate what we have paid. Yes. On top of the, the lesser, you can only claim on what you have already paid. Oh, I know it makes sense. Okay. So next time, maybe if they pay, they pay another five thousand, they will claim again. But as long as the amount reaches twelve thousand, they can no longer claim. Okay. No, it's clear. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, boss. Yes. If there's no payment, you don't claim. No, Santa. Is it a question? No, Eugene, I was answering uh, the gentleman who was asking the question because okay, he was so confused. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So that's notional input tax step. Right, number six, as from 1 April 2021, the managing director started to use his personal computer 100% uh, for business purposes. The open market value of the computer on this date was uh, 6,700. And he purchased the computer new for 15,000 cash uh, in cash uh, during 2019. Right. When you use your personal assets here, yeah, there'll be VAT that can be claimed as long as uh, the asset is being used for what? For business purposes. And again, the VAT that can be claimed is claimed on the lower of the cost in market value. Right, the cost of this uh, personal computer was 15,000. But uh, uh, it was what? The open market value is 6,700. So we're going to use the 6,700. So we we'll have our personal computer. So as long as it's mainly used for business, then the, you can be entitled to this claim. 6,700 multiplied by 15 over 115, multiplied by 100%. But if it's used mainly for private and there's incidental uh, usage for business, then the, you can't claim that. Uh, input VAT. You only claim if uh, it's mainly used for business. And if you are using 90%, then you would claim only 90%. As long as it's mainly used for business. Normally, when we say mainly, we mean more than half 
of the time it used for business. What do we get? Eight seven four. Uh, Eugene, uh, why are you further multiplying by 100%? Because they are using 100% for business. This is the percentage, the oh, proportion that oh, they are using. Oh, okay, business. okay. So if it was 80%, you're going to multiply by 80%. I think that also answers you, Roshi. The 100% is coming from here. They are using 100% for business. If it was 80%, we would use oh. the 80%. But if it's, let's say, less than 50%, then we will not even uh, consider it. Because it's mainly for private, it's just incidental for business uh, for, for the business. So we can only claim the pay the proportion that you are using for business purposes. Okay, right. uh, Eugene, uh, can I ask why are we multiplying by fifteen over one one five? Are we assuming it's a second hand? Uh, it's always route? it's always like that. Okay, okay. That one it's, it's just like that one that we're talking about that you always use the fifteen over one one five for this. Okay. Right, number so six. You, so you do. Yes. From number six, that hundred percent. Since that you multiplied, it gives you the same amount. Um, I can't if hear you. Don't, I'm asking that hundred percent, ne? Yeah, you can, can leave it out because it's hundred percent. But normally we know that we should multiply by the percentage. That's why I'm illustrating. Oh, but if you leave it out, we still don't lose much. I don't think you would lose anything if it's hundred percent. But sure. if it's less than 100%, then it becomes very important. Okay. Because remember, if it's 90% use of business, you have to multiply by 90%. Yes. Right. Then Transparco paid the following other expenses for the two months ending on 30 April 2021. Uh, right. That is for the two months, which fall in, within our period. You always have to check first the dates are they within our period. Electricity, there's that. So they have electricity. Remember, our amounts are exclusive of that. Here, we use our normal rules that if it's exclusive, we use 15%. What do we get? Two seven. Thank you. Bank charges, 540, there's VAT on bank charges. Please, guys, bank charges, they've got VAT. Remember that interest, there's no VAT, but bank charges, there is VAT on bank charges. There is VAT on bank charges. Eighty-one. And the interest paid. Um, hi, Eugene. Yes. On that, on, on computer, I think I saw where they said he bought a new computer, so that one, we're not taking it into consideration. He bought a new computer, but it, that was his, isn't it? Oh, he bought the new computer for his personal For himself, is that you are buying, like you are buying your computer. It has nothing to do with the business, isn't it? Okay, all right. Then it is from 1 April, you now start to use it for business purposes. Okay, okay, I understand now. It's like you bought your computer in 2019, you were using it for your own purposes, then now you now use it for business. Juliet. Um, Eugene, so yes. uh, for the computer, right, you said it's always 15 over 115. Yes. Even though the question said all amounts exclude that. Yes, those are, those are some of the, remember that I said there are some that you always use 15 over 115. Like, like that, the that benefits, printer. that right of use asset, remember, they are always, always, they don't change. Regardless, oh. that those ones are not affected by that statement. Those ones are according right. to the to the VAT Act. Any other question? Um, Eugene. Yes. I'm sorry to take you back, Nate. On that, the motor vehicle part, 
I, I'm struggling to get that um, 209 on the fringe benefit. And like if maybe someone could take me through the calculation, I've tried to, cal to, uh, to calculate the way it is the on Excel. Which calculator are you using? <laughs> it's a normal one. No, I'm, I'm not trying to, 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 to discredit your calculator. No, 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 it's is fine. It, maybe is it a scientific it, or is it a financial calculator? No, no, it's, it's not a financial calculator. No, if it's that one now, it should be good. A, are you making sure that first of all, you have a bracket between the 340 and the A minus 85 there? Oh, I think maybe because I was doing it like the manual. You should way. open a bracket before the 340 and close it on the 85. Okay, so if I do it the manual way, I'm not going to like. If you don't use those brackets, your answer will be wrong. Oh, okay. No, because I a, according to the X, you first have to find this consideration, this one. First, then on that amount, that's the one that you multiply by 15 over 115. So if you don't put the bracket there, a, it will only multiply the 85 by 15 over 115. It will not multiply the rest of the things. I think from the rules of mathematics, remember that the, the, the calculator will follow that. You say bomb dust or, or board mass. Mm. So if, no, no. if you don't put that bracket, it will not multiply everything by 15 over 115. It will only you multiply know, the 85. You know what no. I did? I, I, I think the problem I, I, is her calculator. I think your problem is your calculator because I had to change my calculator as well and get a calculator with a percentage because the financial calculator and the, the business one were not doing the 0.3%. I think it, the, your problem is coming with the 0.3%. You must first convert that 0.3% into a simple uh something and then uh do the calculation because that point three percent it's difficult to do on other uh, calculators that's why you I have to change by, by you, if you if you don't have a percent you just divide by 100 yeah you just and then, three, then you divide by 100 okay so if okay if say, i i i because i was doing it the manual way like I first started with the 340 times that 100 um, over 115, then get the 3% of that, then minus the not, no, Yeah, you're making a mistake, my sister. This is not 3%. It's 0.3%. Yes. Is that right? This is less than 1% that we're talking about there. 0.3%. Mm. Okay, it's fine. I'll try to use those brackets and see if I, I can't get them. Okay, can you say, okay, quick, quickly. Can you say 340,000? Uh, wait, wait, let me quickly get my, wait, give me a few. Yes, 340,000. Times 100. Times 100. Divided by 115. Without the brackets, ne? You don't worry about that. Divided by 115. Yes, yes I'm getting 295,652. Uh, Times 0 0.3. Times zero point three. Uh huh. I'm getting divided 80. by hundred. Oh, divided by hundred. Minus eighty five. Minus eighty five. What do you get? It's eight zero one. Times fifteen. Times fifteen. Divided by one hundred fifteen. One one five. Times two times two. What are you getting? Oh, you know what was my mistake, ne? Because I saw that you said times 0 0.3 divided by 100. I did not put in the <laughs> divide by 100. Yes, you can either divide by 100, but if your calculator is with the percent, you can just put the percent. Oh, now I get it. Thank you so much. Okay, sharp, sharp. Oh, you I... can use uh, that 0 0.003 by Nadira. Yes, it, you it can use the one that, the uh, that Roshan put the, the 0 0.003. 0 0.3 percent so is equivalent to 0 0.003. Thank so you, you can just do what is what you are comfortable with. Right. Let's proceed. Interest paid. Remember that a uh, interest. Please always remember. We said bank charge is the fact, but interest is a is a is a is a financial service. It's exempt supply. This is an exempt supply. So that's it.
Right. If we are done, then we calculate uh, our total VAT input and our total VAT output. Right. So here we have our total output tax. Total input tax. Right. Now, if you can see our VAT output is 33209. Our, our input tax is 4007. Our output is more than the input. So there's VAT payable, which is the difference. So as long as your output is more than the input, there is VAT payable, which is 32209 minus 4007. What do you get? Right, that's it, isn't it? Or we can just say, okay. Any questions? Right, so uh, that's it. So that would be our answer there. The last part, provide the last date on which the VAT payment for April should be made to SAS. Transparco Limited sa 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 submits the VAT retained via SAS e-filing. Right, when should they pay? What is the last date of payment? Not 25. I can hear you. 25 of May. Is what 20? Twenty-five of May. Right. There's a difference. A uh, okay. Some are saying thirty April. Some are saying thirty May. Right. Normally, a uh, your return will be done in the following month, isn't it? In the following month after the the period for which you uh, uh, you you are reporting. So if you are reporting via e-filing. You have to report on the last business day. So, which is the 31st of May. Because if you are paying by check, uh, if you go to the bank or debit order, you have to pay by the 25th of May, 25th of the next month. That is, this is April, isn't it? So, you, you pay by uh, the 25th. But then, if you are doing it uh, through SARS e filing, you have to pay by the last business day. So if uh, 31, if 30, uh, 31 May is a business day, then you will pay on 31 May. But if 31 May is not a business day, let's say maybe the last business day is 29 May, you have to pay by 29 May. 
but normally in exams they don't expect you to go and check the calendar to see if it was a working day or not you just have to know that if it's e-filing you go to the last day of next month but if it was not e-filing it was going to be 25. please we don't use that very month it's not that very month it's the next month because remember your month is to end then you do your you organize your books so that you can be able to submit for that uh, and stuff like that any questions right my friends if because of time i can't go through the next questions can you please look at the next questions i think they are in line with what we have been doing over the past a uh, few weeks was this one it just looks at um a uh, what is income how much will be included in the income of the taxpayer you go on the definition of income and uh, i think we did those things whereby we determined whether an amount can be included in income then uh, this one is looking at uh, uh, whether the amount is included in gross income we did that test whereby you go you can refer to our classes whereby we said you have to check if it is a total amount received by the taxpayer during the year of assessment and it's not of a capital nature you have to assess those things one by one so that you can see uh, if it's of a capital nature and if it is uh, going to be included so please make sure that you can just look at it and then you see if you can you can be able to understand okay it will be sent later don't worry I mean, i'm just going into another class now now but i'll send but now yeah i think maybe i'll try to send by around nine first night uh, eugene can i yes. just ask um how important is it to know how to calculate the capital element of the purchased annuity like using those tables where you check someone's age and their expectant not now not now or not now which module are you doing uh three this one three seven uh, six, no, they one. are combined that's why i'm asking Oh, this three seven six one. Uh, you are going to. You need that, but not now. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. So it's not. It's not relevant at the moment, but you will need it. I'm going to do it later. Because if you are doing three seven six one, you are going to do the taxation of individuals. Actually, some of that income that they will be asking you and expenses is for individuals, not business. But if you are doing tax three seven zero one, it's strictly a, a business. So you don't need that. But if, as long as you are doing checks 3761, we are going to do that at a later stage. It's not relevant for tomorrow. Oh, okay. What what you might only need to know is what are the things that are included in the gross income of individuals, which we covered, I think, when we we're dealing with gross income. You have to know yeah, what is included in gross income and what are the exclusions and stuff like that. Okay. Because basically on those things, they might ask you that. Is this, does this amount can it be included in income and if not uh, what are the provisions and stuff like that okay thank you so much guys uh, god bless you and okay David. thank you Jean. and the case case names yes you need those case right, remember that those, those case law that i was giving you they might ask that you should support yourself with case law okay but sometimes if they say a uh, case law is not required you don't have to put it yeah. Okay, so I wish you all the best, all those that are writing. Uh, on Saturday, I will confirm if we are meeting, but most probably we'll meet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eugene. Have a blessed night, and uh, I wish you, wish you, wish you, wish you, wish you all the best. Thank you so much.